What is up? And Divine 83, Nick Divine. We're going to do a tutorial on Staple Stagger Fuse Claptons SSFC. Um, I'm going to just start right off by prepping the staples that go into the middle, and I will tell you about the build as I go. You guys seen me prep staple before, so this will be no different. I'm going to do 8 ply in the middle, 8 ply a point four. The other wires need it are something around 38. You could use 36, 40, any high gauge wire, and something for the rails or the frames, like 26, 26, 27, 28. Um, Lots of possibilities. 26 and 28 are going to be your most common starting off. But I suggest these three, maybe with a substitution of 36 instead of 38 to start off. Alright. So I'm going to prep my point four. So, like I said, I'm going to do eight pieces. Fold them in half. Well, I'm going to cut four, fold them in half to get eight. So a staple stagger fuse clapton is a staple wire with frames that are claptoned with spaces like a stagger fuse clapton and then you fuse in the gaps when the staples in the middle. I'm cutting 16 inch pieces here also. So I need four of these to fold in half to get a little more than eight inches of uh, staple wire. So this concept is made by Squid Dude who made the staple coil and the stagger fuse Clapton and then he put them both together to get this. I think there was somebody else that might have did it before him but didn't stain the staples up. I'm not absolutely positive. But uh, credit goes to him for this build. He has a tutorial on it on his YouTube page, The Art of Vaping. It's a good tutorial. I'm pretty sure he does it freehand. Um, but, at, I mean, we've also evolved a little bit from then. So I'm going to show you how I do it. There's plenty of different ways to do this build. I'm going to show you how I get it the most successful way um, for myself so there's a couple different things with this build that can make it really tricky this is not an easy build it's not a beginner build this is a fairly advanced build but it is one that uh, you should learn first and after you learn it you're going to move on to uh, better builds with the things that you learn from it. Basically putting something inside of a stagger fuse clapton. So I will point out the tips that I think are important in this build. It mostly has to do with the frames. Um, it's very important not to mess up your spacing on this build. You want perfect spacing if you want a clean outcome and if you want your fusing to go well you need clean spaces and I'm going to show you exactly how I get them clean spaces and keep them clean spaces so I'm just stacking my ribbon now my four pieces folded in half making my loop here I'm not going to go too into this stack in the ribbon because I think I already have three tutorials where I do this. So watch my beginner's tutorials, my just starting off videos, if you need to uh, see exactly what I'm doing here. I go a little bit more into it on them. And that's what I'm trying to do with these videos, start from the beginning and gradually work our way up. My next video was going to be a suka, but I just did it live thinking that it would be going on to my YouTube page, but 
the sound didn't work and I guess YouTube couldn't fix it when I messaged them so I just completely er erased it so that'll be the next tutorial we'll do sukas on the next one Got my water here. Get my ribbons nice and stacked. And this is canthol. This is 0.4 canthol I'm doing. A 0.4 8 stack canthol. And you just want to get your ribbon ready so that when your frames are ready, you can stick it right in the middle. bind it up and start fusing. Just wrap this up. And then I'm just going to get my hot glue. And I know this video is going to be a little later than expected than what I've been saying. So I do apologize for that, but I'm still trying to get it out as quickly as possible. I've just had a busy work schedule working far from home. So I apologize. Alright, so I hot glue the loop end. You could just tweeze it and make sure it's stacked as that hot glue dries. Bring my fingers down the other end, get the stack nice and tight. Hot glue, heat it up. Alright, so our staple wire that goes in the middle is ready. And when I pull it tight, everything's good. Eight pieces of 0.4 canthal. Perfectly stacked and ready to go in the middle of a stagger fuse clapton to make a staple stagger fuse clapton. Alright, now the next step is the frames. This is the. Uh, should I say the tricky part or the um, this is the important part the part that you do really have to pay attention to alright so there's two ways you could make the frames initially you could do one big piece or you could do two short pieces I think the best way to show you guys is in two pieces rather than do one long piece and cut it in half I would suggest doing it this way with the two pieces until you get comfortable with your spacing. So what I'm going to do is, since I need 8 inches, I'm going to stretch my 26, 26 nichrome I'm using here. So I'm going to stretch my 26 out to about 11 inches. I'm only going to need 8. I'm going to do 12 just to make it even. Give me plenty to work with. And it is kind of important that you make a little extra with the way I do it. So I got two 12 inch pieces here. 
All right, so what you're going to need now is you're going to need an RDA, something fairly heavy. Um, the goon works good. Um, the something just would like pretty heavy. I've been using this mask RDA, which is probably a little more heavier than you need, but I kind of like it, especially with the uh, thicker wire that's 38 instead of 40. So I like to use the mask RDA and you're going to want to take the mask RDA and you're going to want to open it up. You're going to be using the whole RDA for your weight. If you've been watching my videos the past couple weeks, I've been using this double loop method a lot and I just really like it for the spacing. I think you get the cleanest spacing and it's the most consistent and I just really like the double loop method. So we're going to have our RDA. We're going to take it apart, preferably without a build in there, but... It's no big deal. I'd be using a goon if they weren't ripped up right now. Alright. So now you're going to get your drill. You're going to take one of your pieces of 26 and you're going to bend a 90 in it. You're going to put that 90 into the drill so that one of the spaces in the chuck bites onto that 90. And then you're going to take the other end and twist it around your swivel. Bend it around, grab it with your needle noses, twist the swivel, and done. Close my swivel up. All right. So now I'm going to get my 38 gauge. I'm going to take this 38 gauge. I'm going to grab the ends of the 38 gauge with my needle nose pliers. I'm going to roll it out at about 10 inches. Give it a little stretch to straighten it. And I'm going to snip it at about 10 inches. Now I'm going to take this end of the 38 here. Stick it inside the drill chuck. And I'm going to clap in a little bit. I'm going to do about 10 rotations and then I'm going to deliberately make spacing in my Clapton. And do about six rotations with the spacing in it. I'm going to show you what this looks like right now. Alright, so this is what it looks like. I got my spacing in my Clapton. Now I've done this on another video, maybe even a couple videos. But I'm showing you again in this tutorial. Now I'm going to take that piece of 38 that I cut to 10 inches. I'm going to bring it behind this. It's very important that you know that you did your rotation in forward or reverse. I did mine in forward. I suggest you do it in forward. So clockwise motion. Because now I have to wrap this wire around in a clockwise motion. So I'm going to pinch this wire. And the Clapton wire coming out. I'm going to bend this wire down in the first space. I'm going to wrap it around and bring it up to the second space and make sure it falls into the second space gap. I don't think it did that first time. I think it did right there. 
and I'll double check that with the macro lens but before I do that I want to get my RDA hanging off of here so I pinch both wires and I kind of pull down pulling some pressure and now I'm going to put my RDA on here so let me back up the camera so you can see it alright so I got the wire coming down and I'm going to take that wire this is the 38 that I cut the 10 inches I'm going to cut it a little shorter and then I'm going to put my cap up and put the two wires inside the cap keeping the pressure going down on these two wires then I'm going to take the deck and I'm going to put the deck in the cap and that's going to grab them wires now I can leave my deck hanging got a little twist up here but that's okay All right. okay so hopefully you see what you're looking at here the one wire that's all the way at the end is the Clapton wire coming out the one closest to this piece of ribbon is the Clapton wire and then the next one is the loop and then there's a Clapton wire and there's the loop coming back up and around in the second space now the first time I put the loop on I must have clipped the wire so I had to do another one so it's the same thing though okay <clears throat> so I wanted to do this view so you could kinda of see what I'm looking at right here because the next step on getting the spacing it's a lot easier with the double loop method but it's not gonna do it itself so what you wanna keep an eye out on is you want your Clapton wire to remain very close to that loop without going behind it and you don't want to make too much of an angle going forward or you're going to make too big a spacing so you want to keep almost exactly at a 90 degree angle compared to that loop so I'm just going to start off slow and then I'm just going to keep that wire tight to that loop without going behind it and without going too far in front of it alright I'm gonna get a different view of this so you can see So I didn't do the space clapped in all the way to the end. I definitely have my 8 inches, but I want to leave that little space there, and I'll explain why later. Alright, so now you want to take your clapped in wire coming out of your spool, and you want to leave about 2 inches of it on, and snip. And then you want to take your RDA, and you could either open it up and take the wires out, or you could snip the wires and get them out later. But I'm going to snip the wires. There's going to be a little bit of a recoil there. And then I'm going to undo the double loop. And take it off. Now I'm going to grab that two inch of wire that I left on I'm gonna put my drill in reverse and loosen this wire up a bit I wanna go down to the drill 
and try to move that clapton on just like if you were about to decor for an alien and make sure the wire the clapton wire on there is loose and it is now carefully take it out of your drill take it off your swivel and put it to the side and now you want to make your second one repeat the same process Okay, now leaving the space on the end for your clapton to move and being very gentle with the spacing is very important for this build. This is one of the things that is very important. This is also important. Loosening, and loosening the clapton up a bit is very important. Just enough so it moves a bit so that when you go to fuse, if any of the spaces are too small, they're going to move out of the way. And it's not just going to grab your wire and not let it go anywhere. You want the wire to move out of your way as you need. But knowing that, you also have to know that when you're working from it from here on out, you got to be very careful. You can't be sliding your fingers up and down the wire. you got to do very deliberate presses. And when you need to move, pick your fingers up and move. Sometimes you'll hear me say, just walk your fingers down the line, and that's what I mean. It's very important to keep these spaces good, to get them good in the first place, and to be very careful to keep them good. Okay, so now you should have two spaced Claptons, 26 gauge, 38 gauge, and a staple wire. All prepped and ready to go. I'm going to show you what these things look like in a close-up. Okay, so here's the staple wire we prep first. Eight pieces of point four, all stacked and ready to go. Here's the loop end of that. And then here are my space claptons. Even spacing on both. 38 gauge spacing, 38 gauge Clapton over 26. Alright, so I don't know if you guys seen, I cut off the two inches that I left on to the Clapton when I got finished doing the Space Clapton. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to cut off any wire that's extra down here also. But I'm going to leave my 90s on the wire. Now, I'm going to take my staple wire, get it in between my index and thumb on this hand. 
going to get one of my frames. Actually, before I do this, let me get a piece of 38 or 40 gauge out and ready so I can wrap these up when I get them good. Now I get my staple wire between my index and my thumb. Get one of my space Claptons. Be very careful not to mess up the spacing. And now I'm going to take my 38 gauge and I'm going to wrap the one space Clapton to the side of the staple. And I'm going to leave this 38 gauge hanging off there. But this little one on this side, I can cut that as clean as I can get it. Now I'm going to take the other space clapton and I'm going to put it on the other side of the staple wire and I'm going to take that 38 gauge and wrap it around all three now move that over like that can wrap it tight as long as I don't mess anything up kind of pinch to make sure everything is good now I'm going to heat that hot glue and let it fall over everything All right. Now I want to make sure that I have a piece of 38 ready. I never let go of my fingers here. And I just put my fingers in the hot glue while it was still wet. I guess I heated that up a lot. It's not dry yet. Now carefully, I'm going to walk my fingers down the wire, making sure everything stays as stacked as it should. Flip it around when I can, when I get to the end. And I can actually cut these swivel ends on. I like leaving them on at first, just so I remember which way the wire is going. It's important to make sure that all the loops started out and point in the same direction when you bind these together. Because if that's the angle you held when you were doing the Clapton, it does matter when you fuse. Alright, so I walked all the way down to the end. Got 
my frames on either side. And I'm going to take a little bit of 38. And I'm going to wrap this up. Not too tight, just so it stays where it's at. And I'm going to do a space wrap in it. I'll show you close up when I'm done what I mean. And this is just so the wires don't fly around as I'm fusing. And that's the only reason. It's um, only a little bit to hold them where they're at. You're more going to worry about that as you're fusing. You don't want to do it too tight because you still want these Claptons to be able to move if they have to. Alright, so you see I did a space wrap up here. And I did a space wrap because if one of them 38s falls in the same gap, it's going to mess up your spacing right there. It's so important not to mess up the spacing. I can't stress it enough. If you mess up one space, it's going to mess up every space going down the rest of the wire. It's going to be hard to catch back up. Now I'm going to go down to the middle. I'm going to get another piece of 38. And I'm going to do like a two wrap. A space two wrap. I guess you would call it a three wrap around there. Just to keep it a little together. So I got it all binded up. I put that two wrap in. And when I looked at it, something was a little fishy with the ribbon. So I had to take it out. Pinch my wire back up again. Walk it down and uh, fix the ribbon and then I put another binder in there also and now everything's fairly copacetic got my staple in between my two space claptons I'm going to be ready to fuse this, and as long as you prep it all good, the fusing shouldn't be so bad. Before I get my drill and fuse this, I want to put a little more hot glue on the end that's going into my drill. And that's just to make sure that all these wires stay together when I'm pulling on it as I fuse because what I'm going to do is hook just the ribbon onto my swivel so if everything's not attached and I pull on that ribbon and the ribbon's not attached to the frames good it's gonna pull that ribbon right out of my frames so you gotta make sure it's attached good down by the drill All right, let's get this in the drill and the swivel. So I'm going to take my two 26s and they're bent out. The ribbon's going to go right down the center. I'm going to close my drill up a bit. And I'm going to sit my build on the tooth at the bottom and close in the other two. Lock it in, and make sure as you lock it in, nothing's getting messed up.
Now I'm going to come down to my swivel. And I'm going to hook my swivel up to the ribbon hook, the ribbon loop. I got them 26s poking out, but that's fine. The spaces are still at the end. So if this clapper needs to move, it'll move. Test it. Make sure when you spin, everything looks good. You want to get that build as center into your drill as possible. And now what I want to do for when I start off is I like to get one of these clothesline uh, clips. And just when I start off, just so I know the build stays flat as I begin it, I'm going to put that there. And once I get a little bit here and I clamp it down with my nylon pliers, I could take that off and not worry about it anymore. You don't want to use that the whole time you're fusing because then your Clapton's won't move where they need to move when they need to move. Alright, so I made 38 gauge spaces, so I'm going to fuse it with 38. I'm going to take the 38 and wrap it around some of the 26, the very little bit I got sticking out of my drill, just to get it anchored here. Put my drill in the forward motion because that's what I did my space clappings. I'm going to start off slowly, bring the wire in off the hot glue. Don't worry about the beginning, what it looks like. Right now I'm skipping some spaces. No big deal. Get as close to a 90 as you can while falling into the spaces. Not too much tension. You want that wire to just fall into the spaces, but enough tension that if it has to move, to clap down out of the way it will. The first bit of your frames is going to look a little messy because that's where you started when you were making your spaces, but that's all right. It'll get cleaner as you go down. So you get about a quarter inch done, take your nylon pliers or even your metal toothless pliers, clamp it down so it gets flat, and that's a good start right there. I could take this off, I'm not going to be needing that anymore. And here's what I'm looking like. Now it's all about just keeping a good angle, a good tension. And just working your way down this wire at your own pace. If you got to go slow to do it, go slow. If you're able to go fast and pick up the speed, go fast. You should be done in no time now. As long as your spacing's good and you prepped it the same way, it should be a breeze, really. Let's see if I can get some cool shots of me doing this.
Okay, if you start getting hung up and everything was going well, maybe you need to take out the first binder that's in your way. Maybe your Claptons are trying to move and they can't because of that binder. So take out the closest binder to you. And try again. If you gotta back it up and fix something and you don't want any wrinkles in your wire, take your nylons, hold on to the wire and pull the fusing wire back. That'll stretch the wire and make it straight again. As you can see, I have spaces that are a little tight, so I'm gonna put a little more pressure in so I could squeeze them in there. Plus stretching my wire, I just made it thinner too. Sometimes you just get a little rough patch, and then you'll be able to catch right back up once you get through it. So that's cheating a bit. I kind of just squeezed it in there and moved the wires where I wanted to move them because I had some bad spacing. But I think where it is on my wire, it's going to be in a lead. Or I could hide it.
so now halfway down I take the last wrap out and now my 26 gauge is free to fly around as it pleases I could even cut it down a bit so it doesn't get caught on to my swivel and it's just hanging so the only thing attached to the swivel at all is the ribbon just watch you don't hit yourself in the face with the wires and fusing, fusing should go pretty smoothly from this point you're pretty much just force fusing it in there if you need to, if the spaces are good, then you don't have to force anything. It should just fall in there. And here it is all coiled up. Um, I'll attach a picture of it in wire porn. Um, wrapping it up is just like wrapping up a frame staple. Any kind of staple. So if you've never seen me do it before, just go check out one of the tutorials. Um, I'm just trying to keep video time down. Just to make the videos a little quicker. So hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching. This is the Staple Stagger Fuse Clapton. And um, each of these coils at five wraps at the same exact specs I do in this video is going to be about 0.18 each coil. If you drop it down to six ply, It'll be at your point two zero per coil. So dual on this one is going to be about a point zero eight. If you can put it at a six wrap, you'll get your point one one for dual coil. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, notification, subscribe comment go follow me on instagram viva la resistance i'm out